there, future nurse. Now, I know I'm getting ahead of myself here, but I bet you'll like this video. And if you do, be sure to head to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube for way more content than you can get here. And you can sign up for free. Now it's time for the case study segment, starting with fluid volume deficit. Miss J is an 80-year-old client admitted to the emergency department with reports of dizziness and episodes of lightheadedness when she stands up too quickly. She reports flu-like symptoms or manifestations with vomiting and diarrhea for the past three days. Oh, snap. Given the current scenario, which assessment data will be the nurse's priority to collect first? So go ahead and pause the screen and try your best to answer this question in about 60 seconds or less. Okay, let's break it down. Now, before answering any question, always think about the key words in the assessment data. So let's look at the key terms. Dizziness, lightheadedness when she stands up too quickly. So remember, this is orthostatic hypotension, our big test tip, that low blood pressure and dizziness upon standing. So the low blood pressure is priority here, since this can kill the client via hypovolemic shock. That's severely low blood pressure, making the heart unable to pump enough blood supply to the body. And the vomiting and diarrhea for three days, this is huge for fluid volume deficit, resulting in severe dehydration. Now the question asks for which assessment data is priority to collect first. So always think for priority questions, think about what can kill this client the fastest. So if you're only to check one thing, what would be the priority? And in this case, it's heart rate and blood pressure. Just think about the ABCs here, airway, breathing, and circulation. So in this case, circulation is a cardiovascular assessment. This is critically important to save this client's life, as low blood pressure can kill this client the fastest via hypovolemic shock. Now moving on, upon assessment, blood pressure is 82 over 48, and the heart rate is 110 beats per minute. Oh my goodness, 82 over 48 blood pressure is super low. So let's go ahead and call the nurse. Wait a minute, you are the nurse. <laughs> so this client is on the verge of total cardiac collapse with that hypovolemic shock. So the question states, what does the nurse suspect as the underlying cause for the client's abnormal vital signs? So go ahead and pause the screen and try your best to answer this question. Now for the correct answer, fluid volume deficit. So remember, low blood pressure is from low fluid volume, specifically with clients that have been vomiting and having diarrhea for three days. This client obviously would have fluid volume deficit, so we'd expect that low blood pressure from that low fluid volume. Okay, moving on to question three. What additional assessment data does the nurse expect based on the client's underlying problem? So once again, pause the screen and give yourself about 60 seconds to answer this question. All right, let's break this down. So before answering, always think about the patho behind the manifestations or signs and symptoms. The body has low fluid volume. So naturally, the body's gonna present low and little and even shriveled up. So we expect the body to be a low weight, low blood pressure, and even weak thready pulses from that low fluid inside the vessels. And as far as labs, you already know that if the body is dry, then the labs appear high. So weight loss is the first answer, because remember, clients with fluid imbalances, weight loss means water loss. And we expect dry mucous membranes, of course, because dehydration dries the body. And weak pulses, those low little pulses from the low fluid volume. And increased body temperature, because when the body is dry, then the temperature is typically high. And lastly, increased hematocrit, because as we know, when the body is dry, then the labs appear high. Now moving on to question four, what is the underlying pathophysiology for the client's hypotension and increased heart rate? So once again, pause the screen and try your best to answer this question. 
All right, let's break it down now, y'all. <laughs> okay, before answering, remember the key term we used for compensatory mechanism. The body's trying to create balance and make up for the missing fluid, right? So the heart will pump faster and move the little blood it has around the body to perfuse the organs. So the correct answer here, the client is hypotensive due to decreased circulating volume and the heart rate is increased as a compensatory mechanism for the decreased volume and tissue organ perfusion. Yes, remember, the heart is working overtime here, trying its best to pump the little oxygenated blood it has around the body. Now lastly, question five. What is the underlying pathophysiology for increased hematocrit in clients with fluid volume deficit? So once again, pause the screen, you got 60 seconds, try your best. All right, let's answer this question. So hopefully, before answering, you remembered hemoconcentration is an indication of dehydration. Remember, that blood is very concentrated. Basically, the blood is turned to mud, that thick blood, because when the body is dry, well, the labs appear high. So the correct answer, hematocrit and possibly other electrolytes will appear falsely elevated because of hemoconcentration due to the decreased circulating volume. Serum osmolality is also increased due to hemoconcentration. So yes, increased osmolality means increased thickness of blood. Remember the memory trick, the blood is turned to mud. Now moving on to the case study for fluid volume overload. Mr. W is a 50-year-old client with a history of congestive heart failure, who is being seen in the clinic today due to a weight gain of four pounds over the last 24 hours. Oh snap, that's a lot. Upon assessment, two plus pitting edema is noted in both ankles. Okay, so huge key words here for worsening heart failure. So question number one, Given the scenario, which assessment data will be the nurse's priority to collect first? So go ahead and pause the screen and try your best to answer this question in 60 seconds or less. Okay, before answering, always focus on the key words and see what it's telling you about the client. So the first key term here is congestive heart failure. Remember, when you see heart failure, always think HF for heart failure as HF for heavy fluid in the body as the heart fails to pump blood forward. And again, think weight gain is water gain, specifically with the heart failure clients. So again, the key numbers that you should write down is two to three pounds in one day. So this question states four pounds in 24 hours. Whoa, that is way too much. This is definitely worsening heart failure, AKA heart failure exacerbation. Now the next key term, or key number rather, is five pounds in seven days. But this question talks about 24 hours. Now the last key term in the question is two plus pitting edema. Remember, that waterbed skin from the heavy fluid. Now the question asks for which assessment data is priority to collect first. So again and again, for priority questions, think what can kill this client the fastest? So if you were to only check one thing, what would be the priority? So in this case, it would be blood pressure. Because remember, high blood pressure is very deadly. We're talking hypertension that is 140 systolic or more. This can lead to the hypertension crisis of 180 systolic, huge stroke risk. Okay, now look at this next part. The blood pressure is currently 158 over 98. Okay, that is way over 140 systolic. It's creeping up to that hypertension crisis, right? So question two, what does the nurse suspect as the underlying cause for the client's abnormal assessment data, including edema, weight gain, and increased blood pressure? So go ahead and pause the screen and try your best to answer this question in 60 seconds or less. So let's break this down. Hmm, well, just remember your memory tricks here. So weight gain is water gain for our HF, heart failure clients. We have to think HF, heavy fluid in the body, as the body fails to pump blood forward. 
So the correct answer is fluid volume excess secondary to exacerbation of congestive heart failure. Now moving on to question three. Which pathophysiological process is responsible for the client's pitting edema? So once again, pause your screen and just do your best to answer this in 60 seconds or less. Okay, let's break this down. The key term here is pitting edema, which is that waterbed skin. From all that high fluid pressure being pushed out of the blood vessels and into the surrounding tissues, called the interstitial space. So the correct answer is increased hydrostatic pressure. Yes, again and again, increased volume causes fluid to be pushed out of that vascular space and into that interstitial space, resulting in edema. Okay, now for question four in our case study. What additional assessment data does the nurse anticipate for this client? So once again, pause the screen. You got 60 seconds. Good luck. Now let's break it down. So once again, think about the patho here before thinking about the manifestations or signs and symptoms. So the body has high fluid volume, right? Like a big bulging water balloon. Naturally, the body will present big and bulging with big weight, big blood pressure, and big bounding pulses. And as far as labs, you already know the patho. We have less concentration of particles in the blood as fluid dilutes all the blood. So once again, the memory trick is when the body is liquidy, then the labs are low. Remember those low liquidy labs from hemodilution, that very diluted watered down blood, which I call hemodilution, very low labs. Okay, now looking at our answers here, bounding pulses, which we would expect from a lot of fluid, and decreased labs, so decreased hematocrit, decreased serum sodium levels, as well as decreased urine-specific gravity. So once again, when labs are low, the body is liquidy, a very dilute body here. Now moving on to question five, what is the underlying pathophysiology for decreased urine-specific gravity in clients with fluid volume excess? So once again, pause your screen and you got 60 seconds. All right, let's break this down. So always, before looking at the options or thinking about the answers, always use the key terms in the question. So decreased urine-specific gravity, you remember decreased weight, or basically low weight, like gravity, right? And fluid volume excess, we have too much fluid. So again, you have to think diluted blood from too much fluid. Very light, liquidy urine, that low weight, from that fluid dilution. So the correct answer is in clients with excessive fluid volume, there's an excess of very dilute urine with a decreased specific gravity. So now you can see how all the manifestations come together if you simply know the patho of what's happening in the body. So remember, always think of the patho first and then look for the signs and symptoms. All right, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. And also feel free to share the love, share with a classmate and even your instructor. See you guys in the next videos. Looking to cut your study time in half? Head on over to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube. You can sign up for free and get access to all of this.